Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, January 18th, 2024 Planning Board meeting. We could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, introduction to board members. To my far left, we have Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, and Rick Raines. We also have Irish Griffith, the code enforcement officer, Terry Wilson, the assistant to code and planning, and Hannah Watson from SMPDC. Um, no public hearings today. Um, public comment, I'll open the first <coughs> public comment up. Just state your name and address. Sure. I'm Susan Morse of Jordan Street in town. And uh, I know the EDGE is coming up on the agenda. And uh, first of all, I want to thank the EDGE for all the work it's doing downtown. It's looking great. And I have a question. When, when I get together with friends, they all say, when is a sit-down nighttime dining restaurant coming to the EDGE? That's what everybody wants to see. And I'm wondering if that's might be coming in, whether the EDGE is trying to attract that type of dining establishment, and if parking's an issue to having that downtown. Thank you. Thank you. So my name's Gary St. Peter. I'm 342 Diamond Hill. I'm an abutter to the McKenzie Project. And I'm a... Um, hold on. That's, um, this isn't the time. Yeah, that's not the time. Oh, that's for that's good. So to talk about that, you got to wait for the public hearing. Oh, that when is that? A little bit later. Uh, public, public comment. It's not today. It's not yeah. today. Oh, that'll be another <laughs> another today. meeting, Gary. Oh, yeah, I was told to come today. When should I come? Well, you wanted me to inform you of the meeting, so yeah. they're, 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 they are presenting tonight. So okay. if you want an update on the project, you might want to stick around and get so the update. So when on will the I be able to speak? Um. When we set the public hearing. Yeah. yeah. When we set yeah, the you'll public get a, hearing. You're in a butter, so you'll get a notice of the public hearing. Okay. But if you want to stick around, they'll present what they've got and what they're proposing. Okay, how long is the meeting, do you know? It, it fluctuates. Point, oh, it could be a half an hour. It could be three hours. Um, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's going to be that long. Okay. Tonight. But they are first. They are first. Okay. So. Oh, awesome. Okay. 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 Otherwise, the rest of us pretty much live here. I'm new to this. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so seeing no one else move forward, I'll close the public comment and uh, now to approval of minutes. We'll start with the furthest one, November 16th, 2023. Having reviewed the minutes and seen no issues for November 16th, uh, I will make a motion to approve as drafted. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next is December 7th, 2023. Uh, one edit, Mr. Chair, on page three. Last bullet point at the bottom, uh, the motion by Mr. Phil, which I have no oh. issue with. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All the, everywhere else it was Mr. Roy, but I, 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 answer, I answer to all, but uh, just for the sake of keeping it consistent. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Nope. I, was, I didn't catch that. That's, I was a little off. We both put our eyes on it. Okay. It's not like you girls it. don't have a full plate, right? Yeah. Uh, other than that one edit, I would make a motion that we find those minutes uh, complete. I'll second that. <coughs> okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And the next is the January 4th, 2024 meeting. to fill you anywhere else. <laughs> it's all good. I was trying to give someone else an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll make a motion to accept the planning board meeting minutes for January 4th um, as written. I will second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm good with it. <laughs> 
All right, now old business, final plan, minor subdivision, Diamond Hill Road, R29, lot 16, R40, lots 10A. My name is Austin Fagan. I'm here with BH2M representing David Springer. Uh, so the sketch plan for this project was held quite a few months back now. Uh, the proposed project is a four lot cluster subdivision off of Diamond Hill Road. Uh, the cluster lots will be served by a proposed paved private roadway. Um, they will also be served by underground power, individual septic systems, and drilled wells. The proposed roadway, including the loop portion, is approximately 1,378 linear feet. This project proposes to use low impact development techniques for distributing stormwater before it goes back into, or uh, before it enters into the low point on site, which is a stream. Uh, we are awaiting Army Corps and DEP permitting for a stream crossing. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward project, uh, nothing out of the ordinary really jumps out to me. Um, roadway, paved, going to be built to town standards, serving four single-family house lots. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Thank you. Is the stream the shaded area in the lower left-hand corner? Is that The stream is this center portion right here. Okay. And you'll mitigate that with a culvert of sorts, I assume, or...? Yep, so there's a, uh, a proposed stream crossing right there. I believe it's a four-foot diameter culvert that'll be going over that. Um, that needs approval through the Army Corps and the DEP, uh, which we are awaiting comments from them. Um, in terms of other stormwater, we're proposing three separate level spreaders, which will catch um, channelized flow from the swales on site, and we'll direct it um, into the wooded areas in a uh, back into sheet flow, which is just a less erosive form of, of uh, flow. Were there, uh, I remember there were some uh, comments initially about uh, uh, Fire and uh, and police weighing in on this. Do you have any any responses from them? I don't believe so at this time. We've proposed Oakwoods Drive as the name. Um, I'm not positive if that has been approved yet, but I can check with the project manager. Uh, additionally, I believe um, fire has been reached out to, and I think most new subdivisions require sprinkler systems, but I have to verify that. So how long for the uh, Army Corps, or is that just um, <laughs> It is however long uh, they choose to take, I think, at this point. There's really so much work flowing through all of those agencies that they're getting to it as soon as they can. Um, you know, a year or two ago, I had told you a month, but I'd say a month or two at this point. So mm -hmm. Okay. You guys have or have not done test pits yet? I believe they're in the process of doing test pits. I know they were going to um, clear out some trees so they can get in there and do that work, um, but I will verify that with the, the applicant. Okay. The only other concern would be your uh, your setbacks for septic with regard to the water passage through the... looks like it affects lots one and three, most notably just uh, placement of septic is going to be key on that. Okay. Now, was there a... Um, uh, is there going to be a uh, homeowners association involved here uh, to cover open space? And I believe so. Yes. So uh, the open space will be, omen, will be owned in common, or as a common entity, okay. and um, the roadway will also need to be uh, road maintenance agreement. So I'm sure that'll be part of the homeowners association. Okay. Yeah, because it is a private road. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Sir, have you reached out to the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife to see if there's any impact on um, any animals or, or native plants in the area that need to be addressed? Uh, I have not reached out to them directly. Um, so as part of the Army Corps permitting, they do meet with the IFNW and the Main Natural Areas Program. Um, we did have to provide them with the Main Natural Areas Program mapping that's just found online. Yep. And I don't believe that there's any um, species of concern in the area. Great. Thanks. What's your... I guess uh, you're talking about a, a spring timetable to get this going? I, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Does Irish or Terry have any questions or hand? Um, do you guys have my memo for this? We're Fancy. scrambling on a few things here. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I can just read through it. Through yeah, if you don't mind. Um, I did have a few comments both on the project and uh, missing submission requirements. Um, let's see. Okay, so six, six point three of the subdivision regulations, which I believe is the just minor subdivision section. Um, we don't have a letter stating um, evidence of adequate groundwater supply and quality, and we don't have a letter from the fire chief indicating the department has reviewed and approved the fire protection system design. Um, we don't have a high intensity soil survey or a waiver for one. Um, there, there is a requirement 6.3.D.11 that said, as the majority of the site is wooded, the applicant should indicate where clearing for lawns and structures shall be permitted and are any other restrictions to be placed on clearing existing vegetation. Um, let's see. And this is probably just a typo, but the cover sheet indicates that the um, proposed lots in your presentation just now that will be served by underground power and communications. Uh, but sheets three and four on the plans say uh, they will use overhead power and communications. Um, so just a clarification on that. Um, we don't have a description of how the open space will be managed, who will be uh, maintaining it, if it'll be a homeowners association, anything like that, um, or a stormwater management plan. Um, and then in the cluster subdivision sections, which is 8.8, .8, I believe, of the land use ordinance, um, we have... 8.8.C.2, .8 um, for a cluster subdivision, you're required to show building locations, or at least potential building locations on the plans. Um, again, the evidence of adequate water, which is the same as the subdivision regulations. Um, we don't have the showing of the potential wastewater disposal systems or wells with the radius um, on these plans, and language for the dedication and maintenance of the open space. <laughs> the the memo is online. I mm -hmm. apologize for not having it in your packet. It is yeah. it, it, it is it was posted. it was in there it on the was. email. I remember seeing it. It's just not I, re I read it yeah. online. Yeah. yeah. If it's, anyone would like a copy, that. I can yeah. give you a copy after the meeting. It's just been one of those weeks. We apologize. Yeah, no worries. I'm not sure if Walter has that memo. Is there way, uh, any way somebody could forward that along yeah. to one of us, too? Thank you. To Walter or to you? Uh, or both. both would be awesome. Thank you. Are you taking care of okay. All right. Well, at oh, this point, would we I just will. schedule the public hearing? Uh, can we? If As per Hannah's memo, uh, the application package is missing multiple items to be considered complete. The applicant must submit any missing materials or submit waiver requests as appropriate. Once the planning board has determined that the application is complete, the board may determine if a public hearing okay. is necessary. Yeah. If the public hearing is necessary. Da, 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 da. Uh, since it's a minor subdivision, you don't have to hold a public hearing, which is why there's the you decide if it's necessary. Um, but you have to find it complete before you can schedule that. And it's not complete. Okay. Were all of these items for final approval or for preliminary approval? For a minor subdivision in the town of Berwick, there is no preliminary approval. Good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> It's just sketch and then you're done. Yeah. All righty. 
All right. So it looks like we have some work to do and set it up next time. Okay. Sounds good. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Now, question question I have for the board for administrative clerical stuff. Um, When they submit the rest of the stuff and they want to come back, um, should we, are we going to schedule the public hearing separate or should we just do it? Once it's found complete, then we'll Gotta schedule. Wait yeah. So it's going to be another. Yeah, never mind. Are there a I was trying to make. I was trying to make Terry yeah. uh, a yeah, butter's yeah, notice. Yeah, on the site walk, it, there's a. I think there's like two houses on okay. that road already. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> okay. Good to go. I'm going to go back Thank to you. bed. Thank you. <laughs> All right, moving along. Um, in old business, the edge update on progress and changes to plans. U004 146 zone village overlay. Yes. Yeah, I gotta deal with that. We did. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, John Smith with Great Falls here to talk about the edge and Julie is with me and we also have Jeff here as well from the edge <coughs> and I think um, Julie's been communicating a lot with the team. I think it's my understanding that we're here to kind of give an informal update on the edge. Just There's been things going on for while well, time flies. It's been quite a while since we were here and I know we talked quite a few months ago about when is a good time to come and just give an update and sort of review where we're at. So that's kind of what we're here uh, tonight for and to answer any questions. <clears throat> um, I think, uh, so I'll kick it off initially just at, um, uh, so phase one of the edge was this building right here, which is 12 Sullivan Street. It's the only <clears throat> remaining building on the site that we didn't tear down. Um, we did do pretty much everything possible to a building aside from tearing it down. So the only thing remaining on that building really is uh, the roof decking and, and bar joists. Everything else essentially is, is new in that building. We have eight commercial spaces in there, seven of which are spoken for, and we have one available left. Um, so that was phase one. We were working on that part of it while we were permitting for the rest of the project. Um, phase two of the project includes the, I don't know, what color do you call this, Julie? Orange. Yeah, orange. This orange? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's... <laughs> this, 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 this right here and this is phase two of the project. Um, and <coughs> we've, uh, where, um, we've completed this building, which is 8 Main Street. Um, that's completed, and we have one commercial tenant uh, that's that's in there right now. We have four residential tenants that are in there that are living there currently. Um, and then three school street is this this building right here, which will have Aroma Joe's in part of the downstairs space, and then uh, the chiropractic. Uh, the chiropractor will be in this portion of the building right there. Um, and then that's scheduled to occupy first quarter of 24. So coming up over the next couple of months, that will be occupied. Um, <clears throat> we've been waiting on, we actually just got our final power recently and are, are working on uh, switching over and getting all that done. And I think we're, we're in good shape now with that, are we, John? Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's, we've been, we've been waiting for that for quite some time. Um, so moving on to other phase two work, uh, what we're calling 16 and 18 Sullivan is these two buildings right here, and we're working as we speak. We have uh, we have foundation permits for those at this point, and we'll be submitting for the building permits uh, in the next day or two, I think, um, for 16 and 18 Sullivan. 
and those are two uh, 12 unit residential buildings and then the last building in phase one is what uh, is nine um, yeah nine school street <clears throat> which was a it's scheduled to be a bank property we designed it to be a bank um, what we didn't know at the time is that we were going to have a pandemic upon us and that was going to change things forever and banks just aren't looking for brick and mortar space anymore so we've been looking for a bank we wanted a bank to be on that you know the uh, that site but we don't have a bank that would like to be there at this point so we're looking to pivot on that particular uh, part of the property and we do have um, I clipped it wrong so our current thinking on that is that what we had for square footage before is this you can see the outline of the building that was there before and then the canopy uh, well you see the drive-through lanes there but the canopy is not shown but there was a canopy structure over that typical bank canopy for the drive-through <clears throat> so instead of building that we're proposing uh, our current thought is that will be our square footage will be just sort of concentrated here there'll be parking here and parking here and it'll still be just a one way through and, and out like was planned before um, and that will be a mixed use building uh, similar to what the bank was going to be which will be commercial on the lower level um, I think in the bank building we had offices on the second level offices another victim of, of uh, the pandemic not really that that viable these days so it will be commercial on the ground floor and then residential on the on the floors above so that's our, our current thinking um, on that uh, we don't we don't have um, much more information to present but that that's kind of what we're thinking on that Uh, and so that is that's our phase two work and then from there we're moving on to <clears throat> we will be moving on to other phases but that take that still carries us through we have these two buildings to build 16 and 18 um, and then the one that we just talked about on nine school which we still have uh, uh, architectural and planning work to do before we before we bring that online so that does carry us through for another um, year and a half or so ish uh, on those and so we'll be starting our planning work on the next phases coming up and I think that um, we'll be presenting that as it as it comes together on the next phases what I'm not sure of is um, you know that we have if we look at like this phase right here was slated as phase four or phase five that was slated as phase five but um but we may uh you know as as it comes together when we look at these phases we may sort of want to bring that along at the same time as we bring this phase along but it's unknown at this point so we would really just as as that comes together we'll be communicating with with uh, it, whoever we need to communicate with to just make sure we're on the on the same page and good with that um, what did I forget? Yeah, can I just add? So we, so on the plan you have in front of us, and the one that John showing here, we added just a designation of the playground that's installed for the daycare facility. If you've passed the site recently, you've seen that we've got uh, daycare playground space uh, out there. So we've just made a designation there for you to indicate as such. And then also, uh, we do have just an, a side note here about uh, three main and five, uh, five main, excuse me. And that's as John mentioned, a future phase. And we just designated there is a potential to adjoin that, um, but we have it's TBD at this point. So uh, we were asked to just put a note on that that might be coming, but we haven't yet decided. It will depend on the tenancies interested in the space there. And then finally, John already talked about nine school, but you'll just see I made a designation on here for nine school street, which uh, is the second page that you've been provided. Um, and then I do want to just while while I'm up here, um, we have our neighbor Susan. Thanks for coming and for your question. <clears throat> regarding an evening restaurant and parking. So if I may just say, we'd love to have an evening restaurant, uh, but we are not evening restaurant operators. So if there's any 
operators that run evening restaurants we'd love to talk to them we do are definitely interested in that use and have had some preliminary conversations but nothing that's stuck yet so it is something we're definitely thinking about and hoping for as well so thanks for the question and then I think you also asked about parking and so if I may just quickly touch upon parking you'll see that the site plan indicates um, it might be difficult uh, to see because there's no lines in the parking lots but there's quite a quite a bit park quite a bit of parking on the site and we also are um, in ownership of 34 Sullivan Street which is currently used as a commuter lot here in Berwick and so we do have plans hopefully in the near future here to make that asphalt a bit better and provide for essentially at least 100 if not more parking spots depending on what design can allow for so um, I hope that answers your question thanks I'm all set yeah, thanks. So I, I think um, with that, uh, are there any questions? Okay, Mr. Uh, some public comment that we've received, and, and both formally and informally from, from the people of Berwick, is there a lot of the businesses going in, they're not going through the regular approval process that people are used to seeing. Um, so they don't have the option to comment ahead of time necessarily. Um, I'm wondering if there's any mechanism for us to better communicate and, and receive feedback on, from the people of Berwick before we put businesses and business fronts in, in, in the project. Yeah, can I just comment on that real quick? I know Lee J and I have had this conversation, and Hannah, I'm not sure if I've had it with you, but um, we've discussed this in the past regarding approved uses in the district and what's allowed in the Village Center District and what's, uh, what's, what you need to go for approval for versus what you don't. So if it's an approved use in the district, our understanding, and so please correct me if I'm wrong, is that it does not need to go through that channel because it's already an approved use in the district. If it was in... Um, if it wasn't an approved use, obviously we know that that would need to go through the channels that you're referencing, but that was always our understanding. And, and that's my understanding as well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just wondering if there's a better mechanism, as we as a team, you guys as the developer and us as the, the town, Certainly. to communicate, hey, this is what is coming. Certainly. And, yeah, just keep people in the know. Yeah, I absolutely. Think, I think that's the, the bigger piece, if, yeah. we, if we can, and if that's a sure. reasonable ask. Irish. <laughs> well, um, what I can say about it is we, we went over this before, if it's an allowable use. I mean, the, the and Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know I, I don't always play well with others, so I say if I say this incorrectly, I apologize. Just my position, I'm very blunt. If it's an allowable use, then really the I think the reason that there's no uh, public hearing for it is because people can come forward and say, you know what, I don't want Irish's flower shop in there. I don't like her. I don't like flowers. If it's an allowable use under the land use ordinance, they people can like it or not like it, but it's we can't legally mm -hmm. say they can't do it. Right. So I, 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 I and because there there are businesses <clears throat> that are going in versus there's nothing that's going to impact like outside or neighbors. Because right. they're businesses, they're contained within the building there's really, I don't know that there would be any benefit to... Well, I'm not, I'm not advocating for a public hearing. I'm advocating for just better communication to... To, mm -hmm. the, to the board I or mean, to the public? Not, or? To the public. I mean, it, you know, that, that ship has sailed, but maybe can we do better community relations is what I'm asking. Well, well we can going. certainly toss some ideas mm -hmm. around, but... Um, and we will have more regularly scheduled update meetings like this one uh, for them to present. Mm -hmm. Or up changes or updates? Yeah, I think we talked about doing it quarterly. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We we all kind of over talk each other with women. <laughs> no, I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, we do work with tenants. Sometimes it's confidential because they're in a current space and don't want to give notice yet or what have you. But multitude of reasons. But certainly a great uh, piece of feedback. We do keep our Facebook page as active as we can on the edge. I know that's not always the best forum to communicate information, so we're certainly open uh, to any suggestions you might have on better way to communicate. Actually, Julie, um, I'm going to say this because uh, Lord knows I've seen it firsthand. Um, I've actually discovered some things happening here in Berwick that I thought would have come through other channels that I found on Facebook. So what is the Facebook page for the people that are here in the public at home that they can follow to find sure. out things? What yeah. is what is the page? Is it The Edge? It's is The it? Edge. Yep. The okay. Edge at Berwick. Yep. If you look that up, it should be right there. Yep. Okay. But, sir, but we're also easy to find. So if anyone has, has any questions, anytime, I think my number's all over the place. So <laughs> feel free to call and ask for myself, Julie Kerr, and happy to discuss. But I, I think... Um, 
Mr. Roy, it's a great suggestion, and certainly we're open to any any tangible um, action items that you think would be better to improve communication. So thanks for bringing that up. No, thank you guys. So <clears throat> before we get too far, if I may, something else that I wanted to, uh, two things I wanted to clarify on this for the part of their presentation. Um, the building that had the handicapped accessible unit, mm -hmm. that if you want to point that out to them so that they can see it, um, that was a footprint change that did go through Lee J and it was required because I freely, again, I, I don't play well with others. I don't understand why the state fire marshals would not give them the exemption because their square footage, everything fit, but they wouldn't exempt them from the ADA unit, so they had to add one. So that did go through planning, uh, through the planner for that change. That was approved before they did it. Um, and then as far as the other building that is a to be determined possibly being reconnected I wanted to point out because I know at least Rick is was was not on the board and because I was not here um, that it's if if I understand correctly Julie and John that was originally designed to be one building and then was split because at the time this was originally proposed through the board there was a square footage requirement that they couldn't exceed so they had to split it so now there's been discussion that they have the option to put it back together if they should cho choose to do that because we eliminated that, <coughs> we being the town, you guys, eliminated that building square footage requirement that prevented them from doing that. So I wanted to point out that those two things were, were approved and why that potential change might come back. Thanks, Irish. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Could Chairman, I have one question. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rick. No, sorry. Um, you gave us these drawings. I have one question. <clears throat> it's not shown on yours, but on this we have a, a dashed line next to 1618. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what that oh, is? Oh, it actually shown? is shown on that. Oh, is it? Um, okay. Oh, I can't see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That line right there. What is that depicting? Nothing. Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh. It's an error. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, we might have okay. taken a dimension there and just left the dimension That's line. Okay. It's a layer. That's all right. Okay. So I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, it's just, no it's worries nothing. at all. Just okay. making sure we have the right <laughs> things. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, I, I was going to ask, could you just briefly give a rundown of yellow, green, blue, and purple for the future of what we're looking at for proposed either buildings or areas? The phases. Yes, for yes. the phases. Yes. It, it is color coded yeah. on your. It's just the the font is <coughs> too tiny. Not oh come on, Mr. Phil, you okay. can't <laughs> squint. <laughs> yeah, I can oh, run that, through the phases one. with you really quick. So John's ran ran through phase one, which is the red twelve solid in here. Uh, that's complete and operational. Eight commercial units, seven of which are occupied and running. Hopefully, you've been there to support them. They're great local businesses. And then the orange is phase two. Um, so, as John mentioned, uh, 8 Main Street occupied and, and running. Got some vacant units we're looking to fill. Three school, hopefully soon, uh, this first quarter. Not hopefully soon, I'm looking to Jeff, definitely this quarter. We'll be done Three School Street, and so you'll see Aroma Joe's, the chiropractor, open up in there and some residential units. 1618 uh, foundations are in. Building permit will be submitted imminently so, and then those will get started on 212 units there. And then 9 school, we're in design, and so that's shaping up um, as we speak, and so... Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> but like John said, it'll be mixed use, commercial on the first floor, residential on the top, like the other buildings. And so after phase two, we'll move into uh, to phase three, which is the purple phase right here. Purple is six Main Street uh, right here, and then two four Main Street. Two four Main Street is actually one building. It's connected on the upper floors, disconnected on the first floor to have a drive aisle for parking behind it. So it's two four Main Street on this plan, but it's actually one. Uh, building on the upper floors and that six main street stands alone and so for um, I have to reference my notes real quick here to keep uh, my head straight here six main street we currently have uh, three commercial units on the uh, first floor with 15 residential units on top uh, two four main street is proposed it was proposed as four commercial units and that's the plan with 26 residential on the upper floors there um, and so from a timeline perspective that will hitch off as soon as we're complete uh, you know, complete or well in their way, uh, finishing phase two. Uh, and then the next phase is, uh, as I said, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. Phase four is the green. Um, and phase four, like Irish mentioned, is actually, uh, might just be one building right now. It's designated as three main and 
5 million Irish is exactly right. When we got this approved, there was a 14,000 square foot um, ordinance that we couldn't exceed. And so uh, the potential to adjoin that is uh, to be determined based on tenancies and uh, how that shapes up. So you'll certainly hear from us uh, when, when it's time to make that decision. Um, and then the, once you finish phase four, uh, phase five is also in the pink here. It's two edge way. This is one commercial units and 51 residential units with some park. This is a parking structure you see underneath the building there. Um, and so, and then the final phase is phase six, no address yet here, currently proposed as six commercial units and um, residential units on top. I think we've, um, I don't have that in my notes. Oh, 96 residential units. So it's quite quite a large building, and that'll be the last phase in the development there. So it's a really quick synopsis, Mr. Rain. So I'm sorry about that. If you have any questions, happy to answer. No, that's right. <laughs> Um, I, would, I want to just touch on, on time frame. <coughs> Good question. Sorry, do you want to touch on your, and I'll I, come I back wanted, to that? <coughs> yeah, just touch on the phasing too, because right now it's, you know, it's sequential, one, two, three, four, five. Not necessarily going to be built that way, but we tried to you figure that out. speak to the mic. Oh, oh sorry. yeah. yeah. <coughs> we tried to, you know, have it sequential four years ago when we put this together. But <coughs> what we're thinking about it now, um, the phase five, which is um, right here, is really because we're doing 16 and 18, and if we get all of our infrastructure and stuff in and are able to then build this parking lot, then um, it might make sense to get this phase five going because nothing stands in the way of being able to do that. Um, whereas before, we, you know, we thought we needed to get more stuff done here before we could do that. So it, that's why I say it's kind of TBD. And... And back to this here, the, the use of that building will really determine whether we connect it or not. Um, if we have a large scale ground floor use that needs more than that square footage there, that's why we would connect that. And we have one in mind that, you know, we're thinking about. And so we've got to, but we haven't, we're busy on phase two and figuring out phase three because, as we all know, we've had challenges. Um, interest rates, inflation, all that stuff have affected what we're doing, and we're just trying to figure all that stuff out as we as we move forward. So we haven't really given a lot of thought to that building yet and whether it will be connected, but, you know, as far as keeping you informed, that's kind of certainly potentially in the cards. And then to address the timing, really all, all I can say is that we are going to, you know, we, our goal is to just continue moving forward. Um, you know, in full disclosure, we're funding per phase. Phase two is it was a funded phase long before the issues that we currently have. When we moved to phase these other phases, um, it's no secret rates went up, rates are coming back down hopefully, right? And that will be beneficial. Um, inflation hit construction extremely hard. And so, you know, we're trying, we got to sort through all of those challenges. And all I can say is that we're working in earnest every day um, trying to move that forward, and that's um, uh, that's that's the best answer I can give you, unfortunately. So, uh, on the uh, sixteen eighteen Sullivan, which are residential, uh, is there local parking there at that building? Uh, you know, in that envelope there uh, for the residents. Well, yeah. Well, so and I know it's not only for the residents that right. there is no assigned right. parking. That's right, absolutely, yeah. Um, well, so one of the reasons that we that we put these into phase two was because they are residential tenants and we can work with the residential tenants, communicate with them and educate them on what the options are. And so they, the proximity to this parking lot here is is pretty solid. That's why we figured it would be good in phase two. However, if once we get this built, that obviously offers options for these residential tenants as well. Um, but we've got construction activity that will be going on here and eventually here. So these residential tenants, you know, we'll be communicating with them about parking here for now. Okay, so so beside the building, there are no parking spots there. There's nothing adjacent to the building. It's all. It's going to be in this back parking lot here, okay. or it's going to be over here. As far as private okay. parking goes. Thanks, John. Yeah. Is it your vision to rehab that parking lot 
prior to occupancy of those? This those, one right here? Yeah. That's scheduled to be done. It's actually, we are in agreement with the um, DOT to do to make part of it a parking ride, an official parking ride, and uh, parking ride, excuse me, and then in the balance, though, it's, it's all going to get a fresh, thin coat of asphalt and new striping so that it performs for, you know, well for the next five, ten years at least. You know, it's not a full rebuild. Yep. It's a freshen up. Okay. And that was supposed to be done. But as with everything, um, you know, um, state-wise, it just, it's, it's taken more time these days. That's the way it goes. So. Do we have any updated information on that, Julie? Have you heard lately? No, when? just push. I, I was just in communication. They're shooting for spring, but are delayed with finding people to do the work. So we'll see. I, I don't want to report just really, but hopefully spring. <laughs> Can you address the footprint change on 16 and 18? We do have a footprint change, correct? Yes, yeah, so <coughs> 16 and 18. <clears throat> if you look at our initial plans, you'll see that we had building envelopes that look <clears throat> don't have quite as many zigs and zags as we have in here. And I think, I mean, ultimately, when we look at, you know, e each building, um, we are trying to achieve, uh, you know, something with a little bit of style to it. Um, and uh, as opposed to just a simple standard box type building. And so um, when we we're looking at 16 and 18, that's kind of, uh, I mean, the, the, I don't know if you can see, you really can't see, but they were just a rectangle. So we're. I'll show them the elevation. This they, the elevation if you guys want to pass it around. They only have one pocket. They've made it more uh, fancy. Yeah, it's really nice change. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Did it expand the footprint at all, or is no. it, does no. it falls uh, in the no, same it, envelope, right? It falls yeah. within, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay. it falls within. You and guys are uh, giving them the factual stuff. We want you to tell them the pretty up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted nothing that. to tell you the pretty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So that's why those are, are changed. And uh, that, you know, we spend a lot of time and effort around the table at, at the conference room there to, to figure out the style. And that's something that, you know, Cindy was really adamant on, like trying to go with this. I mean, we're, it's kind of a row house type of look, which you would see in many um you know, many town centers, if you will. Uh, you might see a lot more of them in a bigger, if it was a mill town or whatever, but we've got a, a just a smattering of them there, basically, you know. So that's how we sort of got to that and um, feel like it's going to be a pretty good look. Yeah. Any other questions? So, and just for the board's awareness and for transparency, and because I have a favorite ask of, of Julie, um, we uh, there was some discussion that occurred uh, earlier today in regards to when they would have to come back before you for an actual site plan amendment for these footprint changes, because some of them, like the ADU, um, I mean the. Uh, can't tell I do ADUs all day, yeah, can yeah. you? The um, ADA unit, that was a, a had to happen real fast thing, and that was well beyond their control. It was, it was a result of the state fire marshal. So, uh, but they are aware and they've agreed that before any of these like bigger footprint changes happen, they're going to be coming back in for site plan amendment. Um, Julie, my favor is when what we're what we're all going to try and do is just CC all of us mm -hmm. when we do our communications so there's no no trip up they've been very good at, at being very open and transparent um, and we might see about scheduling some like maybe every other month five minute zoom sure, meetings yeah. amongst us all just to make sure that if there's anything that the board does need to know that we know to bring you bring you in so yeah. I think it's also important um, <clears throat> for regular updates for the townspeople to know that you're not just doing nothing. Right, which is, right. I mean, I'm a builder, so I know how long things take. Mm. Many people don't. Yeah. So they look at it like, why is it taking so darn long? Right. I know why, yeah, yeah. but the yeah. more you can check in every couple of months and say, this is our update, I think the more people will understand how it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, and we're happy to, I mean, I think this probably 
case to be made that it's been too long since we've been in here just for an informal update. We're happy to come any time, really. And I think we'll you'll see us probably formally um, with things like 9 School Street when we get that figured out. Um, but we're happy to come anytime informally. And um, and my number is out there as well. You've got Julie's, but, you know, anytime a phone call, if people are asking, if you can just direct them to ask because we're happy to answer calls, answer questions at, at any time. Can I just say it's also important that we get the as-built drawings? Mm -hmm. When they're done. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yep. That's so uh, when I spoke about the every other month Zoom things, I was thinking, you know, this kind of this row with Jeff included um, and Andy if, if needed. Uh, how frequently do you as a board feel like you need them to come in and give some presentation or send in a memo of how they're doing? I think anything more than probably semi-annual or quarterly, quarterly. Is, a, is a heavy ask. I mean, they're busy people. What yeah. is semi-annual? I think uh, maybe also depending on how many changes there are. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, like if they're coming in for a site plan amendment, that would include the update, I would think. Yes, so, but well, if they're not yeah. doing a site, if they're not doing a site plan amendment, yeah, my question every five is or six months. Every so about every five or six months, and and do you want them to come in this way, or do you want if they have if they don't have anything that needs to be visualized, do you want just a memo type of report? From them, my what? personal opinion is I love to talk to people face to face, and I'm not, you know, like I no, know we're all busy. Nobody would have guessed that, Rick. <laughs> no, I know, but um, the ability to ask questions and get feedback um, immediately, yeah. as opposed to I'll send you an email and we'll wait three weeks for an answer. Right. That's my personal opinion. It seems to make sense that we would maybe get another uh, update somewhere around June, July, and then again at the end of the year or something like that. I think like that's that. reasonable. Yeah. And, and okay. I mean, if we want to embrace technology and use Zoom as well, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, you, still, guys, you guys are busy. Still again, instant. We yeah. Well, I, we're, we're, we're uh, face to face people too, so <laughs> I'd <laughs> much rather <laughs> and, and talk about it and mm -hmm. be able to answer questions that way than, uh, you know, we can always email, Zoom, whatever, but so we're, you know, we're, we're happy to do that. I just yeah. thank you. I just wanted them to leave mm. with an idea yeah. of what the board's yeah. expectations are. One last, yeah. one last question or yeah. consideration that on the green section where you talked about merging those two buildings. Yeah. Would you still have a pedestrian walkway through there? Well, it, that's a great question because I, I we kind of like that from. Uh, it's just a real choke a point for the businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to depend on the floor plan of of the offering that goes in there. That's mm -hmm. really what's going to boil down. That's a, it's an ideal thing to have there. We, we like it because it, it just, you can park there and, and connect to other parts mm -hmm. of the site. Um, so I'm, I, we're going to try to keep it, but I'm just not sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has to move down 20 feet the other way, and then that works, and we end up with a small little end cap there. Uh, it just depends. It'll be driven by the floor plan, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, like that change will be, you know, when we get that designed, we'll be back here with that because mm -hmm. it will be a, it will be a big change, you know, yeah. to, to what we're talking about. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. New business moving along. We have Berwick Small Engines, Rene Lapierre, Conditional Use and Site Plan Review, 74 School Street, U002, Lot 9, Zone Village Overlay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure. Why is it? 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 Why is
You can move the mic with you, though. Yeah. You can, you can move yeah. the yeah. mic with you, Remy, or you can grab the really good pointer. at answering questions. Public speaking is not my strong point. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so if there's any questions you guys have, I'm looking to, I guess, propose six parking spots. May just do five so I can make them a little wider. Nobody likes dented doors or having to take a 40-pound bag of bird seed and squish between two vehicles. So do a retail shop which is going to have bird seed suet seasonal changing tools like if it's winter it's going to be snow shovels if it's summer it's going to be spades and flatheads type of deal tiki torches winter time pellets for wood stoves and we'll say like rock salt and stuff like that uh, then over in this that corner would be the service area for small engines, nothing like rings, pistons. We want to stick pretty much service, serviceable parts, sharpening blades, oil changes, tires, things like that. Um, the, I guess, I'm more of the turn the wrenches type of guy, so whatever questions you guys really have, I'll answer on this so it this is for two buildings one's an existing repair shop but that's getting rebuilt correct and that's going to be the shop area you know no customers nothing like that that's my garage where i will work and service lawn mowers and it can be from chainsaws small 10 horse smaller boat motors outboards um, I'm getting diagnostic tools for the new electric weed whackers, lawn mowers. You got to stay up with the times, type of deal. So, um, pretty much can offer a little bit of everything on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other is a retail shop, like you were discussing, and that's correct, closer to the road. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Things like you know, like local arts and crafts. If people have jams and jellies, or like shelf sitters, porch signs, type of deal. So. Okay. Um, the building would probably have a nice little New England feel to it with a farmer's porch type of deal and the little bay window to put a Christmas tree or seasonal decorations and stuff. So I know that we have a lot of traffic that comes from south to north to get to 95 <coughs> or to get to um, the main turnpike. So I see bumper to bumper traffic all the time. Great location. Not looking to do anything huge, but... So the the retail store is new construction, correct? Mm -hmm. And the shop is a rehab, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. And then if this does hopefully well, like I believe it should, then we can talk about pulling permits to redo the garage type of deal. Okay. Yeah. Any potential use for that grassy area in the back? There may be some storage. Um, I do want to get into like maybe building like wood storage sheds for like cord wood things like that. Maybe some homemade bird bath, bird feeders. Maybe like storage area or a display where maybe people can come out and look. But for the most part, it's going to be just grass for now. Okay. Um, there will be a dumpster area contained, fenced in. So, yeah. Fenced in? What a concept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's one of our hot buttons here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing how you can take the trash, put it in a dumpster, and somehow it still ends up on the ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's your, what's your time frame for this? Uh, as soon as I get an okay, then I would like to, you know, start breaking ground in spring or sooner, if, yeah. you know, type of deal. So. Okay. Um, if I may, yep. just uh, because I did not have a chance to write the memo I wanted and we didn't get anything from the chief, uh, I think the board should be aware that uh, Chief Plant and I did go out there to, uh, at Mr. LaPierre's request, to evaluate the existing shop, what it would need to be brought safe for him to be doing this. Even though he's not having people in there, we kind of like him, we don't want him dead. So, you know. Um, so he has the list and he has taken care of most of the list from the fire chief as far as what safety measures he would like to see taken care of. Um, the reason I'm mostly speaking up is the driveway is 17 feet. We had a conversation about that with the chief while we were there and the chief is absolutely okay with that. Um, he's already told Rennie that, you know, 
if it's on fire, then they're going to get in there. It's not a problem, right. and they've got apparatus and hose that will get back there anyway. Yes. Um, so I wanted to address that because neither the chief nor I had a chance to do a memo for the board, and I apologize. Okay. So he doesn't need a 24-foot driveway? No. no. The chief is quite okay because of because of the location, the distance back from the road, um, the width. They have hoses that are long enough to Yeah, push. they have yeah. hoses that are long enough, and he, you know, really um, – there was some conversation about how he can make the. Uh, I believe the there's an extra five, possibly seven feet um, that's not paved that can be if I can pave right to. The surveyors have already come out and did their um, first round, I guess. They took all the measurements. They have yet to drive the pins in the ground. They said they'd be by this week, but as we know, today's Thursday. So they could be here tomorrow to put the pins in the ground so I can get the exact to where I could pave. Um, but I believe it said we could pave like 95% of the property, but I don't like that at all. I'd rather just pave that front few parking spots than in between these two buildings so I can get to the overhead man door for a storage of pallets and stuff. And the, the surface in between, because he does have permission to utilize that shop once he gets these other items taken care of, the surface alongside that 17 feet is solid, so it's not like, you know, muck jump drop off any kind of like that so he'd be okay and um he did get verbal permission from the town it's written, it's written. oh it is written yeah. now for the curb cut so mm -hmm. <coughs> is this an existing business or a new business so apparently when you try and attempt something you can make some mistakes my <laughs> thing was like everybody <laughs> loves the stuff i can do i specialize in like 1980s which is now considered antique Thank you. Uh, to anything older, 1800s, tractors, refurbish, tear them apart, find parts, the hard to find, the better type of deal. Um, I can work on new stuff also. And I've just done it so long that people are like, you should really do something and work for yourself. I applied to a couple other small engine places and definitely was willing to hire. But I'm like looking at them, hey, and I'm going... If they all want me and everybody says I should do this, maybe I should do this and skip the middleman type of deal. So we're going to attempt to do this, I guess. Right? Yep. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> she's the arts and crafts one. I'm she's not sure. the, I'm not sure she's the one who does the paperwork, question. makes it sound good. And so it's I, a new business. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I went, I went to the state. I filed all my paperwork. I got my EINs. I did all that, my retail certificate, resale. And then I went to the town and was like, hi. And they were like, you didn't get our permission. And I was like, oh, I was supposed to see you guys first, apparently. He got his spanking already. Yes. yes. I've been doing, I've been handing them out freely these yes. days. <laughs> yes. So. But he's making it right. Yes. So we're going to call it a new-ish business. New How's that? Okay. New-ish yes. business. So we're still waiting for a couple things. Um, we received a letter of adequate capacity from the sewer district and Maine Water. Um, I think we got that from the sewer. Oh, it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I gave you a, a whole separate little uh, packet okay. of yeah. mm -hmm. comments. And were you able to find your existing utilities? I know they cited yep. that in here. You were able to find them, yep. and you're okay tapping into those? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you won't see anything from Chief Plant, but he has been out to the property, like I was saying. The only thing left to do on the existing building is the new roof. So, which materials have been purchased for? It's just been a little chilly. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can I ask one question? Sure. Um, uh, Rennie, just as far as the, the paved parking area mm -hmm. in front, you feel like people can safely back out of these parking spaces without having to go out onto School Street? Correct. Okay. Yes, I have done it multiple times. Um, just in my little grassy area, which is why I asked for the curb cut, because I really want to keep people off of School Street. Um, when I originally bought that property, it was a large mound, and you had to only back out of the driveway. Mm. And it's just people come out of Cumberland Farms, no headlights on, you don't even know they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, my neighbor, who's a, an amazing lady, has a very large maple tree. 
very hard to see. I told her I would remove that. She's okay with that. So that maple tree will come down so you can have, you'd be able to see past Cumberland Farms at that point. Nice. So. Nice. Now, most of the small engine business is traveling to somebody's house to pick up a mm -hmm. lawnmower, tractor, subcompact, stuff like that. So it, the retail is more for the bird seed, the jams or jellies, the mm -hmm. tourists driving by that want to get a piece of Maine on their way in or out yeah. type of deal. So, nice. But we're not doing anything large, just a 20 by 30, I guess, to start and see where it goes from there. And you'll have signage out on School Street to indicate yep. your retail shop and your Correct. small engine. Yep. So are we going to talk about completeness? Mm -hmm. What? I so spelled your name what, with too many M's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering, so what, what is remaining? The only thing that I had noted that was missing, but it seems like you've gotten it in the meantime, was the letter from Sewer and Water. Yeah. So, okay. okay. You're good. So based on that, I'd make a motion that we find this application complete. I will second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right, um, should we do a site walk? That's the next question. Might be a good yes. idea, I think. Okay. Yep. Um, two weeks from now, was it February? Terry's calendar. pulling up the calendar. Yep. Going too fast, Mr. Bosch. You don't, don't want to do a public hearing in site walk? Yeah, yeah. together, right? Yeah, we're okay, just talking day. about that. Okay, good. Let me just make sure oh, <coughs> the uh, noticing uh, yeah, time. What you're um, if I move the picket fence, you guys could drive by and see. It's a 100 <laughs> by 100 square foot property. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can walk it if you want, but yeah, really, like, just, like go to come, just go to <laughs> Aroma Joe's, grab a coffee real quick. Look, <laughs> I mean, it's right there. It's yeah. a straight shot. Yeah. No, you guys are more than welcome to come by anytime. So, um, we could do it on the 1st or the 15th. So our question to you is always, do you have time to get I the know, abutters? That's, <laughs> that's what I'm looking, because I'm actually going to be on vacation for a week, so let me just look at this carefully. If um, they need to be there, I'll do them. Just make sure that I have time to do them. So, um... Yeah, because we have to, it, you know, the big thing is the advertising in the paper. Mm -hmm. Can't you prep that early? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be in, what, it 10 runs days Friday. before? Yeah, yeah. If, like if, if I notify them Monday, right. it'll run on Friday, but it needs to run for a week before. So right. uh, we really should do it on the 15th. It's not right. like you're anxious to break ground uh, in this frozen ground <laughs> anyway, right? So we're talking <laughs> about... Um, February 15th, is that, is that acceptable to you? We could push it to the 1st, but I think the 15th is a safe bet. Now you guys tell me what to do to okay. get this to happen, yep. so. All right, so yep. let's plan for the 15th. Okay. Um, time, five, or is that too late? Or? Uh, it's probably too late. 4.30? 4.30 then? That's um, adequate? Okay. So okay. two fifteen. I can be right. Okay. Four thirty on the fifteenth. And Mr. Chairman, just to clarify, that is for public hearing and site walk. Yes, we were just discussing the site walk, so now we'll discuss the public hearing. <laughs> so the public hearing we can do on that day as well. Okay. February fifteenth. Um, if you could, I know the ground's kind of frozen now, but um, either stake out or either that or like spray out just like Curve corners cut. for the new building. Okay, yeah. Um, that way we can kind of get a feel of yep. where it's going to be. And, for sure. Okay. Um, other than that, we'll see you on the 15th. All right, perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm going to add a spot. It was supposed to be in here. I, yeah, I know. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's for all, the... Um, there's two different agendas. Policies and procedures. Yes. So we're going to be... Um, oh, yeah. We talked about and amended um, the policies and procedures last meeting. Yes. And I hope everyone had a chance to go over them. Um, 
And now we just have to vote them in. I did look through them um, in the email that she sent, and um, I think that it pretty much touches on all of the changes that we talked about last mm -hmm. time, um, and it looks like it's well put back together. So I personally don't <laughs> see anything that I would need to address. <laughs> Uh, we'll add that right after. Um, all right. Well, I'll make a motion that we accept the new and updated policies and procedures. I will second. Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? All right. Thanks for catching that, Mr. Chairman. Yep. The next, um, this kind of goes along with that is we discussed previously about information cards for notices of site walks and we just wanted to kind of follow up on that if that's something that we could put in for this coming site walk remember that we're just going to have the information card that says you know um, the site walk is just informational um, if you have any questions please save them for the public hearing um, is that something that we could um, do and uh, get an okay from you? Wait, wait, we can do I that for the next meeting because we don't have a site walk before the next meeting. Okay, right. talking can about the site walk protocol, I, I'm not basically so um, something we can a couple meetings ago. Oh, yeah, oh. We, we discussed having like a little card that when we send out the abutters notices that we could also have information saying what the site walk entails, like um, that it's just for informational items and if there's any questions or concerns mm -hmm. to save it for the public okay. hearing. Mm -hmm. We'll get you on that next time. Okay. Second? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Jerry and I just were discussing this before the meeting and just wanted to break that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll, we'll have a, a sample of something. Okay. Yeah. Jerry's yeah. handing yeah. out the next yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry's, Jerry's <laughs> handing out the spankings to me now. <laughs> <laughs> See how it goes? Well, busy. Karma. Yeah. I forgot it until I read it. The thing that's one of the problem. All right. So well, that's the, the deadline for this next thing that on the agenda snuck up on me. So <laughs> I've got it in my notes. I'm gonna be it's too late. You already voted in. Well, I just need to circle with your. All right. So now moving on is land use ordinance amendments. Um. So what you guys have in your packet is the. Um, it's this lovely little red and black sheet. One page. What I did was I took, I trimmed the fat because this is how we're going to be presenting it to the town manager and the select board and how this will go to the voters. So I just took off all the portions of each ordinance that weren't being modified. So like um, the campgrounds, for example, A, we didn't <coughs> touch any of the other numbers. We didn't touch one, three, four. It's just two, five, and six that were touched. So this is literally everything you discussed before, just uh, scaled down to per only what's pertinent so you guys can read it and understand it without having 16 pages mm -hmm. before you. <laughs> so I have one thing I'd like to discuss, and that is on 6.3.1 residential growth limitation provisions. Um, each subdivision shall be issued only three permits per year, even if the parent parcel is located in two or more zones, including overlay zones, unless the subdivision is served by public water and public sewer. Yes. If you Would you like me to refresh the board's memory on yes, why this please. is? So as the board <laughs> is aware, and I'm trying to play nice with others, but as the board is aware, so 6.3.1, the entire um, growth limitation growth restriction ordinances are being revisited as a whole um, on a large scale. Uh, you guys actually voted to not handle that as part of this, the, that proposal as part of this at the last meeting, just to refresh your memories. Um, but in the meantime, what happened is one of the other, um, the reason this all came to be, give you a little history, the two minute background. <laughs> One of the other subdivisions that was approved by the planning board that is not on town water or sewer 
was in split zones and within those split zones there was three permits three three lots that were sold now of those two lots were in one zone one lot was in the other zone so the realtor sold the fourth lot because upon reading our ordinance it was just vague it's just vague enough it's gray enough that depending on how you're looking at it it can be read as okay well you can have three per zone or three per subdivision regardless of zone because of the circumstances and the the fact that it was in essence the town's ordinance that led to the error because it didn't wasn't cut and dry it wasn't clarified um, the town attorney gave me the go ahead to issue that what is essentially a fourth permit in the subdivision um, but we needed to add some clarification verbiage and uh, after discussing it with the town manager, it was determined that this would be the best verbiage to have that would suit what the uh, majority of the people who wanted 6.3.1 probably would like to see. So that's how I wrote it. And I, quite frankly, just needed something that clarifies it because I'm here to enforce the ordinances given by the town, and I don't want to leave anything like that's a huge gaping um, gray area. And I don't, I just need it closed somehow. Mm -hmm. I need it to find black or white. Now, my thought on this is I'd rather see it as per zone and not limit it just as three altogether. Um, we also have to think, we're thinking one side, now we have to think of the other side as a developer. If they have a lot of land, and some of it's on R3, and some of it's on RCI, or R2 and R3. Not, I mean, to, if, not to forget the overlay zones, because right, those right. do and have to factor in. Right, exactly. I mean, it's relative to size and scale, but I mean, if someone's subdividing, and they can only build on three lots at a time, that, that chokes them out very fast. You know, so if it's per zone, then technically if they're on two zones they could do six in a year right that's correct I mean I I kind of push towards that I know that we want growth to be slowed but at the same time there's a housing crisis in Maine I just want to keep repeating that because the state says there is a housing crisis um, and as it is now I'd be more apt to leaving it but just have better verbiage for it so it well it's I'm going to stand right in the middle and toe the line where I'm supposed to be and have been told to stay it is completely the purview of this board to make whatever suggestions you guys feel on this I have my own personal stance on this um, I just wrote what I'm <coughs> what I was told to write so whether you guys choose to do it this way or if you want the verbiage flipped, well, I will do whatever you tell me so and get that uh, out can I, to you. Can I ask for a little clarity here? Yeah. Please do. Okay. I want to make sure uh, you aside, understand. Aside from, you know, straddling, you know, zones, mm -hmm. uh, if I am a developer and I come before uh, the planning board asking for an 18-unit, you know, single-family development, um, they can only build three of those 18? The way the current 6.3.1 ordinance is written, any, any subdivision that is not on town water and sewer can only be allowed three building permits per calendar year. So if, when you come into my office and you look at that large whiteboard, right. there are subdivisions with numbers beside it. Um, there is one exception. Atala Lane was approved prior to 6.3.1 being uh, uh, adopted. So therefore, they get additional permits because we go by what that ordinance was when that subdivision was approved. But at this point in time, every subdivision you guys approve, if they are not utilizing town water and town sewer, I have to restrict them to three building permits per calendar year. And the purpose of restricting them is what? To slow growth. Um, well, then what does the water and sewer thing have to do with it? Because, okay, here's, I can, I am going to 
compare it to you, and I'm going to try and do it with uh, little to no inflection or influence, I'm going to pair it to you what I was informed about from several people in regards to 6.3.1. So anything that is on town water and sewer can have, um, I think there might be a 20 building permits per year limitation or cap, something along those lines. Um, and anything that is, the reason the delineation was water and sewer versus well and septic is because the intent from my understanding of the people, or what I have been told, not from my understanding, what I have been told, the intent of the original 6.3.1 was to discourage developers from putting any sort of development into the more rural areas that are not, and the rural, more rural areas do not have water and sewer, so that's the easy delineation. That's the easy factor, limiting factor, was that was what was chosen. So um, because you have, to, and you have to invest so much money into infrastructure to do these developments, to even get them started, if you know you're only going to sell three lots in a year, you have to really either have the money set aside in reserve to get through all of this, year after year if you're 18 lots you know you got you have six that, years of, of this of going. this tied yeah. up and right. and so if you it it's kind of what i was told point blank is so it's done it, to discourage development is in our rural the year areas. a calendar year yes. yes so if i start one in december mm -hmm. i can do three for, uh, by december and get three more the next year the next yes. year, even so though if, if somebody, it's not a running 12 months. So, Paul, you, you, uh, you get approved right now for your 18 units. So you can do three in 2024, and then you can do three in 2025. So your project will be finished approximately 2027 if you continue. Wait, no. No. 2029? Three times too many. Yeah, math math is I'm tired. <laughs> I can't math. I'm trying. I'm putting all my effort into the English and trying to not influence the board in any way, shape, so or form. If I may, I, I like. Please. I I do like the verbiage of this, and the, and the reason I do is I, I think we've heard overwhelmingly both um, people coming in here and, and expressing their thoughts, and you know via social media people expressing their thoughts on growth. And I think it's a good check valve. And if we find that it is too restrictive, it's within our purview to to change it. So I, I think, you know, doing my due diligence in service to the people of the town of Berwick who have voiced their opinion, I would be inclined to agree with the way it is written. That would be the board's decision. Yeah, I, right. just, is, I just yeah. typed Well, things. no, there's, there's, a, there's <laughs> a broader thing right. going on here. Yes. I mean, if we're well, talking about 20, then, you know, if we have seven uh, subdivisions going on and each can only do three, they actually, you know, somebody's going to get two because, you know, they're – they can't do 21. Yeah, let me. So, but this, it is so what this is discussing is this is only when it abuts another zone. Right. So right. this would be like an R2, R3. And I, I'm, I don't have a problem with this. I'm just trying to get my head around the entirety, the, of, the entirety of, of the issue here. How often has this come up in the past? Well, it, it comes up in the code office occasionally. It occasionally. comes up more than you would think, and quite frankly, um, does it make your job easier the way this is written? No. No. Okay. No, it the does not. The concept of only three <clears throat> building permits per subdivision is going to come up with every single subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yes. The concept of only having three for the whole subdivision, if it's split, does not come up as often because right. we don't mm -hmm. have right. as many parts. So does this apply to cluster so, housing as well? Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. it applies to any literally anything that does not have water and sewer. Year. I think the the one concern that I have about the ones that do go through two zones is it's almost as if um, well, it's not their fault that the zoning was done through their property. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So if they have a subdivision on property that ends up in two zones. I guess there's two sides to that coin. One is you can say, well, it's just one subdivision and the other one is well, it happens to fall into two zones, so I get twice as many. Mm -hmm. What's better for the 
person doing the, the development and what's better, not better, but what's in best interest of for the town, you know, desire, or I guess I didn't answer any of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> but they're well, good questions. It, I guess the, the question <laughs> is, is do we try to limit what someone can do on their property, or do we not? Right. Is this a loophole we're trying to close, or is it not a loophole at all? Right. Right. I mean, and that's also another thing we can talk about is three permits in a year. That's a different discussion, I believe. I mean, it sounds like this is not a super common occurrence that a property is, is in two zones. Right. I mean, this has happened yeah. once since I've been on the board that this has been an issue. So, well, I mean, that's what I can tell you is that I've been here a year. This is the one time that it has been an issue in regards to a... Um, a home, and I don't want to disclose too much personal information about it, but basically it was kind of an urgent matter as far as this person being mm -hmm. able to build. Um, this is like, this was a pinch point <coughs> in essence. Um, but this is not the only time that um, the question has been posed to me about, well, they're in two different zones, does that mean I get? Because the vagueness of the, it's not so much the vagueness, it's the lack of clarity mm -hmm. of this. Um, but yes, it has come up. It's come up um, in regards to uh, not only people calling me in regards to whether or not they should purchase lots in subdivisions, um, so therefore whether or not residents choose to move here. But um, to answer Mr. Royce, Vice Chair Royce's question, uh, the reason I'm familiar with Atala Lane is because a gentleman just purchased it. That purchase was almost tanked because of this, because he asked if they, how many he'd be able to build, and I said, three. And he's like, mm, zones, no, da, da, nothing, nothing makes it, no, nope, three. And uh, it almost didn't happen. So now, because James did the research for me, because I didn't have the time to go through and find out when and what the ordinance was at that time, once the develop the potential developer discovered that he could in fact do more than the three permits, it then began became a viable project. So what was a basically half abandoned subdivision project that was started is now breathed back into life and getting more houses. He's actually been working on the but road. That was a grandfather thing, right? It, that it, was grandfather. Yes. Not because of the two. But zones. the thing is, is to be asked uh, to, to be asked whether or not right. this makes a difference. Yes, I get asked about it, and yes, it does make a difference, and it does make things, you know, sticky. Sticky. It makes things sticky. And right now, whether whether the board decides to tackle this or. I know in Vision Berwick's looking at it, people are sending out all kinds of ideas. Select board may take it. I don't care what the ultimate rewrite or whatever of 6.3.1 ends up being. What I'm asking of the board is to just clarify one way or the other that zone split thing because yeah. I don't... At the end of the day, it goes to a vote anyway, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, would, I would be comfortable as drafted and, and let the people decide. Yeah, I, I am too. I I, I, I think. Well, the problem with that is it, it's are they just going to adopt all of this at once? It's they don't get to pick which ones they want to adopt and which they don't. Uh, I no, the only, I, times, I don't the vote only here. times it's changed is if it's cannabis related, and then all the land use ordinance are separate. Every other time, we all just vote as a whole. I can guarantee that. The I, I'm not the a voter here. I uh, but no, this, when I go in to vote, if I remember correctly. You have each one as a line item, and, and it says the select board recommends this or this, but each each I would hope change so. is a line item. It was on the I'm last ballot. I'm not sure that that's true. No, I think not. it might be all in use ordinance yeah. updates. Please check yes or no. Yeah. That's how it is, and unless it involves cannabis, and then it's on its own. Or if that's, it's a separate, not a land use thing, but right, something else, it's right. separate. Yeah. That's a, that's something to be clarified. I think. I yeah, think we need clarification I, on it because I, I mean, recall the last time I vote I voted there were you voted, in a, you item. voted line item for line item I the last so time too. I voted because it, it was yeah. it was a long ballot. Well, <clears throat> okay. Here I have like an absolutely <laughs> crazy idea. Can can I just throw a question out there and yeah. for like Certainly. you know what yeah. Paul said and everything else? Wouldn't it be 
on a case-by-case -case basis. Say like you had a subdivision that came in that is four houses. Three happen to be over here and one's over there. Right. Well, that's the and situation we that well, I need clarification on have, because if you, know, you... 30 if, and the split, you know, there's so many here and so many there. Well, that's that's what I'm looking for clarity on. Well, I know. It, is, is you're saying falling in two different, two different zones. But, would that be something that would fall under the purview of the board to say, okay, because of the size of this, you can have a or, no. or it has to be? It has to be clarified in this ordinance okay. because I have to know what I what can or enforce. can't allow, yeah. and that's the that's the crux of the issue. So I do have a a crazy out in left field suggestion that might satisfy the board and keep us from being here till ten. <laughs> um, so. We have We've two got, hours. Do we get to time? Yeah, we got plenty of time. <laughs> hey, hey. We got I'm, plenty of time. <laughs> um, uh, I'm halfway through the coffee, but here. So this has to go to select board, attorney, and voters, right? Mm -hmm. If you would like, first of all, we are having the public hearing on the, well, I don't know. We got it in February. The public hearing is going to happen for the yeah, land It's the second ordinance. meeting in February. Yes, so the 15th. Yep. So we're going to have um, the public hearing. We'll have the public option the uh, public way in as well uh, since this goes to select board if you guys would like I can write it up with the opposite verbiage present them both to you guys you guys can present them both to or does it or do they have to pick one or the other we'll have to pick as we finalize it before it goes to the select board well you know well then um, you guys got to decide tonight <laughs> well no we don't have to decide tonight but we I'm could teasing. have both both written and then have a public hearing, and we can discuss both of them. I don't see so why you want we me to write it. Our public the other hearing way. is on the first. Is the yeah. next it's meeting? The first. That would be the oh, next. Okay. Yes. Actually, it's finalizing it is on the fifteenth. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So the, the way other. it's written now seems to be fair, uh, because that's... if I am oh, yeah. a builder and or developer, and I, by the luck of the draw, have now straddled a uh, a division line then I, I'm in the bonus round and I can do six. And everybody else is out. And everybody else is out. So it's not fair. So uh, I think in the, in, in the interest of fairness, the way it's written here makes a lot Every of sense. Every subdivision gets three. My no issue is I'm just surprised at it, if, as, if the it's, gross numbers If it's here. tapped into yeah. public, not, a, total not total town. The so total numbers that's, are, that's the yeah. next numbers argument is. is, is I have no idea that. because they Right. Don't so don't I understand downtown, we want, we want growth downtown, but there's only so much downtown that we can grow in. Right. I mean, with density issues, which like R1 versus village overlay, I mean, there can only be so much growth downtown. Right. But it, at, one, at some point, why are we making it restrictive on one side and, and not on the other? I mean, yeah, it does seem a little. It's it's already the scale is already tipped in my opinion. Like we're already yes we're already trying to do this, but if there's no influx in population, like heavy influx. I mean, you look at the population changes. It's been on a steady decline and it goes up a little bit. I mean, if it was a huge boom, I would understand. Yeah, we should we should cap it, but there isn't, you know. And I know Les has talked about this before, yeah. and it's <laughs> really Mr. Chairman. It. You're just defining well, we're limiting it for well, development. You I mean, can you can really. also raise the number of permits that are allowed. Yeah. Whatever you guys are, whatever you guys want me to draft, I can draft in. And um, this this is already passed muster with the town attorney and the and the town manager, correct? You, you said no, you got it's only been through the step town one. manager. It goes to the attorney stage. Yeah. Oh, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know what he's asking. Yes. You guys, we did you guys are answering. You guys are answering on behalf of what like the ordinance procedures. To clarify your question, yes, when that particular situation arose. I did speak with the town manager, uh, and the town manager gave me permission to speak with Attorney Saucier. Attorney Saucier stated in writing to me that it could be determined either way. Mm -hmm. In essence, um, and this is where I, like I said, I, I know my job is the difficult one, and people don't necessarily like me for decisions I make. That having been said, 
Um, I'm fully comfortable and confident making decisions. I'm very sure of my competency. However, as a non-Berwick resident, I was not comfortable making that decision had the attorney make that decision. Ultimately, um, without this verbiage added, it's my choice whether they get three per zone or three total. And I was not comfortable with making that decision because this is what the town of Berwick voted for. So I got the okay from the attorney. So yes, the attorney says that w the way it's written can be read as three per zone or three per subdivision period, depending on how your you choose to interpret it. Your interpretation. So no matter what you guys do, it's gonna fit within what's actually already legally been drafted. Um, we're just tightening up the verbiage, really. Yes. Taking out of the ambigu ambiguity. ambiguity. Yes. I, but Terry, again, I, I think you know the the townspeople have have vocalized it loudly um, that they want some checkpoints to you know keep growth in control, and I think this is one that is very reasonable, and I think it it does. It answers two things. It answers the, the townspeople who are asking for this, and it obviously streamlines the process a little bit for you, making your job a little easier. I, I'm for it, personally. Yeah, I'm, I'm for this. I think that after having this discussion, I, too, am for it the way that it's written, and a change that I would maybe want to see if it needed is to increase it from three permits to a different number but that can always be done at another six month interval right and that's really not what's in front of us correct you know, and i will i will clarify that. and just remind the board that this entire section the residential growth limitation provisions it is in your ordinance 6.3.1 i'd advise you all to read it and familiarize familiarize yourself with it can't math and I can't English. Damn, we're doing good. Um, because that was what you guys tabled last meeting that is going undergoing an entire overhaul because um, what, how it was, when this was implemented and what, it, and what has actually been implemented is not, obviously, I'm going to say it, I'm, I'm the blunt one. It's obviously not doing what the residents intended to begin with, or else we wouldn't still be hearing so much from the residents that they want to see growth slowed down. If this provision was working, then everybody would be kumbaya, and that would be that. That's why you guys had like a four-page thing about this. So this whole thing is going to be rewritten. This is something I, again, strongly encourage you guys to familiarize yourself with because I think this is going to be like the big change for next year on however this is, however the townspeople review this and, and however it gets rewritten. But um, at this point, I just need somebody to tell me what the hell I'm doing so that I know that I'm doing what the voters want, not what the attorney or myself want. Do you guys tell me what, tell me what I'm doing? I, I hear the voters <laughs> loud and clear, and it, it sounds like they want some type of a mechanism to to slow growth. I, I don't think this is going to have a broad-reaching impact to do that, but it does have an effect, and I think it's... Yes. That's yes. why it's getting re... That's why okay. it's getting redone, because it doesn't have the broad-reaching impact that people were hoping, I think. I, yeah. I don't think that... And I'm not arguing that it, yeah. it's, it, it is there to slow it. I, my concern is if you had the ability now to do a possible six because of where the zoning is... Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, three seems a lot lower than six, but it, it's a rarity. It's not it like, it, it's very, I mean, it's even at that point, I guess I would be more advocating lifting three permits and ha and trying to figure out a better number right. that suits well, it. I don't think it's it all affects that many projects. And if that, right. is, if that is something you guys wish, I can draft this, I can retype all this, redline it with whatever number you guys want. Um, yeah, it doesn't happen too often because if you look, I mean, when you throw in the overlay zones, maybe well, a little more frequently, but... And it's, it's, the, it's the zones that don't have water and sewer. Yes. So, so you're talking your R2, your R3, where they're typically doing clusters anyway. So the one we saw right. today on Diamond Hill, four units. Right. Mm -hmm. Four, you know, they're, yeah. they're one that can only do three, three in yeah. a year. Yeah. And, you know, so they can't finish their project. Right, in, in a 2024. year. 2024. Right. 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 
I mean, as a developer, I would think that that well, unless they, they that unless they get it done before it's voted voted in. No, 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 no. It's, already, it's all in no, the zone. Oh, already it's right. oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This yeah. has yeah. been That's limited to three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Saying, in other words, is there a way? Depending on what it is, if you have only four, right, limited to three, can I do all four at once? Four right. is the, Not the, way it's the delineation between. And, and this is only in relation to, to to two. So zones. It's a very unique situation. Right. right. So right. I'm not talking. Yeah. Are all subdivisions yeah. only going to get yeah. three? The answer is yes. But in this situation, we want to make sure that. <laughs> I mean, know, given the the homework that Irish has done and the lengthy discussion we've had, I'm good with the way it's written. Do we do we want to take a vote to? Move forward. Oh, we don't have to vote. We we're not voting okay. on this. Oh, we're I, just uh, discussing this. I just I want to make sure yeah. we're in agreement. But <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, may I throw one one thing out to you that came up on our three brain cells because of Mr. Amatucci? Um, <laughs> the delineation between minor and major subdivision is four. Mm -hmm. So that might be more of the answer is to change the or propose changing the three. To four, so a minor subdivision. Yeah, right. could be completed and, in a year. And that yeah. might be more. Um, I'd, I'd be in more agreement to that yeah. because I that just seems like it that, would that actually sounds like, logical. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I think um, from what I've heard, my experiences with the public, um, you know, a minor subdivision being, for me, the balance is. It, I understand the, the thing about growth, but I'm the one that also gets all the calls from the complaining neighbors about that and legitimately have already received one this calendar year about, you know, the trucks are beeping. It's like, mm -hmm. so I, I'm looking at that for the next several years. But um, if they have a, if you have a, a four house subdivision, do we really want to make the neighbors go through that torture for an extra year for one lot? That might be a good, right. you that's know. something to look at closely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, so yeah. you want me to provide you with a red line with just a change from three to four and keep this uh, the two restriction yep. to the yep. one for, for its regardless of your zone that's overlays? Reasonable. Exactly. Okay. okay. Yes. That might be a good compromise, yeah. and that might be a little more palatable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that makes there sense. There won't be that many four lots. Oh, my God, I made sense. Yep. Did you guys get that on camera? It's about time. I made sense. <laughs> 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 Do I get a gold star? All right. <laughs> okay, red line. All right, is there anything else that we want to touch base on the land use ordinance? Um. I think we discussed most of these not, not yeah. red line changes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I tried. No, I didn't add anything except yeah, for the, what you guys asked to be added. Oh, space. Yeah. the only other, there are two, a couple things I'd like to point out if I may kind of, since I, mm -hmm. since they're kind of taken over anyway. Um, so we did add a definition for steep slope, and James and I kind of discussed this. We went with 15, per, 15 foot, or so 15 percent, because that was something that was brought up by uh, somebody who had written in. So we did not have a definition for steep slope, but we have it in the ordinance four times. Um, basically, uh, that. And then uh, the other thing that James had asked me to put on here is that all references to marijuana in the land use ordinance shall be changed to cannabis mm -hmm. because the Office of Cannabis Policy changed their name to Office of Cannabis Policy from Marijuana Policy. And if it was important enough for them to mm -hmm. do, we should probably follow suit. Yeah, the whole, the whole state. Yeah. yeah. So that's something. That, as far as the other change, uh, I just took the XX and put the 180 days that you guys had said for a temporary structure. <coughs> um, and then to address <coughs> to address the uh, oh the 7.13 where it says signs shall not be um, in red. That somehow in one of the edits of the land use ordinance got dropped. So we're just going to put it back in. Mm -hmm. And then signs affixed to power poles without express permission from the owner of the poles is not permitted. That addresses that uh, uh, suggestion we had received about people attaching business signs. And then there was... So this on the, the back side of that where it says signs continued, 
keep getting asked about this. We have nothing in the ordinance one way or the other in regards to the illuminated signs for delivery vehicles. Whether or not, and this is going to have to go through the attorney, this came up as a potential solution tonight, so it obviously will have to go through the select board and the attorney. So whether or not we can even regulate this, I'm not sure. But we thought a happy medium would be illuminated vehicle mounted signs shall be turned off when the vehicle is parked. So that way they can have their Uber and their Lyft and their Uber Eats and their Domino's and their Pizza Hut signs while they're driving their vehicles like they're supposed to, but not as a glowing advertisement in front of the buildings when we don't allow internally lit signs. Mm -hmm. So that's something that is new on here. We'll right. What's that? It'll be a rule whether they follow it or not. We'll <coughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but and it, whether or not it's legal, I'm, right. I can't speak to that. I, right. I want to be very transparent. Sure. I did not run this by the attorney, James, and I kind of off the cuff to this one. Um, I don't know, about five o'clock. <laughs> so uh, just looking for a solution, but that is a new one that I think you guys need to discuss or be aware of at least and choose to discuss if you want to. Mm. And otherwise, everything else here is just a cleaned up version of what you guys had discussed previously, but those were the new things. So not to get into the weeds about the signs on power poles, but express permission from the owner of the poles. CMP owns them, it's technically illegal, but so there are people there are people and places where depending on the uh, you typically wouldn't run into this anyways, but sometimes depending on the location, there are people that have to purchase their power poles from mm -hmm. CMP. Mm -hmm. And in those situations, if they say, yeah, you can put up your Tom's Tree Service sign on my pole and I have ownership of it, right. then yes, but otherwise, and that is just to give me the, the right. And for, for the board and the viewers at home, if that goes through um, and I find business signs that are there. Oh, we did add one more thing in there. <coughs> Thank you for the triggering my brain. Um, but if I find signs that don't belong on power poles, I will be able to remove them. My intent will be to call whoever is on the sign, give them the option to pick up their sign, give them seven to ten days to do so. And then if not, they'll have to be disposed yep. of. The other thing we did do is we added uh, on the page before that in Part B, as far as exempted signs, agricultural signs. Mm -hmm. So your farm stand stuff is not, I don't need to permit that. That came right, up in the right. sign discussion. Yeah, we had talked about that yeah. last time. Now we're just yeah. clarifying it. Like I said, anything we can call out in specifics on those ends, I appreciate mm -hmm. as your enforcer. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. yes. One, one question. Yes. On the power poles owned by CMP. Yes. Does that count town postings of weight limits, which are on close to them? It is. Yeah. See, technically, I don't know if the town has any uh, permissions from CMP for those. I know. They may or may not. I would have to look into that, but. Uh, literally CMP's uh, if you ever go onto the you have to find the right thing but it's it's without their permission you cannot post anything even weight limit signs and I see that all the time on their polls yeah mm -hmm. and they may they may or may not be uh, giving some sort of blanket permission to the municipality to do so I'm not sure I can look into that if you'd like um, so but it's definitely uh, thing that would arise if they put it up on the same pole year after year it's going to wear that pole out in those areas yeah <laughs> I know and then yeah I, yeah it really has no teeth though when you think about it I mean because no. I, I don't think well, CMP, it'd be, CMP it'd be CMP's be not gonna, Irish's discretion at that point yeah, yeah. I don't think CMP is going to go around yard and no. signs does off the, their poles does the town actually also get permission yeah. when they put up the well, that's what, things, yeah, that's what that's what he's asking. Yeah, the town can stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, supposed to be there, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, if CMP has to do work on a pole and you've got their si your sign there, pull they it. rip it off and they yeah. chuck it in the back of their truck and you never see it again. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen it done. So they can and will, but they won't bother to they actually go just go around and right. enforce yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But they they have that law stated clear because if their boys need to climb that, ladies and gentlemen need to climb that pole, they're gonna get up there whether your sign's there or not. 
is the way it's written going to make it more difficult for you because you're going to have to go ask for proof of permission and you're going to have no. a lot of follow through? No, because CMP will not give a local business permission to attach a sign to the poll. Whether or not they will give a municipality, they have in the past given municipalities permission to temporarily post things. But um, So if you see a sign on a CMP poll, you're going to just take it down? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so... Now, should we add business signs? Should we make it business signs? Because like what Rick just said, yard sales, lost cats or dogs. Technically, <coughs> it's technically they're not supposed to be technically there. Technically, it's I know. illegal for all signs. Right, but should it still be okay to put yard sale signs? Because you're not going to have a number on those. It just so, says yard sale and an address or a yard sale. I think you can sale. put whatever you want in writing. It's, it's not really... Yeah. So it's here's a little. Let me blow the. Let me blow the board's mind. Welcome to. Welcome to my world. Here we go. Let's just, uh, um, so, in code enforcement, there is a, a thing. It's called selective enforcement. Okay. It's what it is. Is a code enforcement officer can choose to act or to not act in certain situations. The caveat to that is if I act in one situation, every situation like that follows suit, I have to act the same way. I can likewise choose to take a non-enforcement approach, which would be what basically every code enforcement officer in the state does in regards to yard sale and lost, sign, lost dog signs. Um, and as long as you do that equally for everybody and you do not deviate from that for like, without a good reason. Obviously, if they're putting up a big old yard sale sign that's blocking visual, that's a visual obstruction, then yeah, that yard sale sign can come down, but not because it's a yard sale sign, because it's a visual obstruction. Um, but that is, it's a, it's a uh, non-enforcement ability that code enforcement officers have. So am I going to spend all my days wasting taxpayer dollars ripping off yard sale signs? No. Um, if somebody calls and complains that there is a business sign or a a sign that's always been the way every municipality I've worked in has well for the most part has done it one municipality that I worked in uh, the director would periodically just pop in his vehicle drive around and hit the the known local <coughs> spots and yard all, every sign off throw them in the back of his truck um, but basically it's it's a an option to enforce or not enforce if it's not a harmful thing and technically that's CMP's wheelhouse to enforce but this just gives me the teeth to take those signs down when people call and complain which is how I would handle it would be on either again I already handle them if they're a visual obstruction because we're not gonna have people getting killed because Fluffy it's, ran off. Um, if it's already illegal for, the, for them to be on CMP's posts why do we even have to address it that's because right now mm -hmm. it's illegal for them to be on CMP's posts but it's CMP's the only one that has the right to do that removal because it's on their post if it's in our ordinance that they cannot put them up there then that's a violation that I can handle when somebody calls mm -hmm. because the reality is is if there's a sign a business sign that's up that's offensive that shouldn't be there that's blocking view but not necessarily blocking view to the point where I would have to remove it or the police would have to remove it for visual obstruction, but I get a complaint about that. Um, chances of me going out and being able to take that sign off are great. Chances of getting anybody from CMP to even listen to you about it because you have a complaint because this is where it shouldn't be or it's on the pole in front of your mm -hmm. house and you don't want you know, got people coming up to your door. Mm -hmm. It's really where you get the calls is, you know, we somebody put this sign right here and it's, the 10 feet from my from my driveway so somebody pulls in and says hey I need my roof shoveled off too well then they can call me and take have me take the sign down but CMP ain't gonna care if you got five people a day knocking on your door because mm -hmm. they want their roof shoveled mm -hmm. so it gives me the ability to go do the enforcement on a local level versus having to call CMP and say hey I got somebody that keeps complaining or just tell the complainer to go tear it down I mean <laughs> I would love to, but people are too afraid because you get shot really easy these days. But so that's the only reason I would not change it to just business signs, is because technically, if they put up any sign that's okay, you know, I'm okay with that. You're gonna shoot me? No. Not such luck. 
I go to bed now. All right. Um, next is a second public comment. Crickets. Know. Okay. Got um, a waiting list. You got a waiting list. Informational items. Do we have anything in the for you? No, just a reminder that we are doing that uh, main water walk tour. And that is on February 20th. February 20th at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Put it right there. It's a Tuesday. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard from most everybody we have a good amount of people that are going to go. So. I'm going to be there to play in the water. <laughs> nice. Um, anything else? No? All right. Nothing I can think of. There's no further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Burke Town Hall. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.